the Argentines were able to defeat the British in the Moody Brook barracks and then take the government house in Port Stanley. This effectively meant the defeat of the British in the Falklands. Britain responded by creating a war cabinet and deciding to send a task force to regain control of the Falklands. Let me start with the introduction of Falkland. The British in 1765 were the first to settle West Falkland but they were driven off in 1770 by the Spanish who had bought out the French settlement about 1767. The British outpost on West Falkland was restored in 1771 after threat of war. But then the British withdrew from the island in 1774 for economic reason. Without renouncing their claim to the Falkland, Spain maintained a settlement on East Falkland which it called Soledad Island until 1811. However, in 1820, the Argentina government which had declared its independence from Spain in 1816 proclaimed its sovereignty over the Falkland. In 1831, the U.S. warship destroyed the Argentine settlement on East Falkland in reprisal for the areas of three U.S. ships that had been hunting seals in the area. In early 1833, a British force expelled the few remaining Argentine officials from the island without firing a shoot. In 1841, a British civilian lieutenant governor was appointed for the Falkland and by 1885, a British community of some 1,800 people on island was self-supporting. Argentina regularly protested Britain occupation of the island. After World War II, which is 1939 until 1945, the issue of sovereignty over the Falkland Island shifted to the United Nations. When, in 1964, the island status was debated by the UN Committee on Decolonization. I will explain about the issue of Falkland War. First issue of Falklands War is a recognition of territory, which is, from an Argentina point of view, the war was sparked less by an invasion and more by a recognition of territory that was by right is theirs. The history of the Falklands is rather convoluted. France was the first nation to establish a colony on East Falkland in 1764. Before the British claim West Falkland as it on the next year, five years after that, Spanish troops captured the port of Fort Edmond, which is Britain's first settlement on West Falkland. On a machinery working for the United Province of the River Pledge, which is a forerunner of what would later become Argentina, they claimed possession of the island. In 1833, the British reasserted the, their sovereignty and requested that the Argentina administration to leave. Britain retained possession of the Falklands from that point on, but the issue of the island sovereignty remained contribution. The issue is the Falklands war fired up by Britain. The fact that the Prime Minister could announce that a task force was sailing mean that political attention soon move on from the humiliation of being cut out, which is helped by the resignation of Foreign Secretary Lord Carrington and on to the campaign. The initial assumption was that sending a task force would create conditions for a diplomatic settlement. The US Secretary of State Alexander Haig shuttle between London on and Buenos Aires trying to get a deal. Later, even after serious fighting had begun, the U.S. Secretary General Javier Perez de Cuella also tried. The British agreed to substantial concession, including a measure of Argentina influence over an interim administration while 
talks over the long-term future of the island went ahead. The junta, however, could not bring itself in the end to concede that the talks might not end with a transfer of sovereignty. Diplomatic activity filled the weeks as the British task force cell sought. Next, we have the parties involved in Falkland War. I'm going to be explaining for the actors involved in United Kingdom sides. First, we have the Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. She is the United Kingdom's first female Prime Minister, served from 1979 until 1990, and that is when the Falkland Island War happened. On April 5, 1982, Thatcher sent a naval task force 8,000 miles into the South Atlantic to fight the Argentine forces before a land attack on the island. In the end, there were 38 warships, 77 support ships, and 11,000 soldiers, sailors, marines in the British fleets. The war lasted for 74 days, ending on June 14, 1982, when Argentina gave up. In the end, 649 Argentine soldiers, 255 British soldiers, and 3 Falkland Islanders died in the war that led to the island being taken back by the British. Second, we have the Admiral Sir Henry Leach. He was the first sea lord at Admiralty when the Argentinians invaded in the island in 1982. On March 31, the British found out about the invasion. Henry Leach did a lot to convince Margaret Thatcher that the Royal Navy could take back the island. His advice started a chain of events that led to the task force being sent out on April 5, which is a very short amount of time for such a big job. His advice had to do with politics for sure. He was worried that the cuts to defense had hurt the Royal Navy the most and he wanted to show that it still played an important strategic role in protecting Britain and its interests. The task force was sent out quickly and with clear direction. This showed how determined Britain was and made it much less likely that a diplomatic compromise would work. Third, we have the Admiral Sir John Fieldhouse. He was the Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Navy at the time of the invasion. He was given ultimate command and control for retaking the Falkland Island but discharged these duties from his headquarters in Northwood. The code name that was used for this mission was Operation Corporate. The fourth and the last one we have is Admiral Sir John Sandy Woodward. He was in charge of the carrier force that Margaret Thatcher sent to take back the Falkland. From 1985 to 1987, he was the deputy chief of the defense staff. In 1987, he was made an admiral. The Royal Navy Task Force would remember Woodward for his powerful and clear command of the task force. When Argentina attacked the Falkland Island, a British overseas territory, on April 2, 1982, he had just been promoted to Rear Admiral and was in charge of the carrier battle group from HMS Hermes. Three days later, the first ship from British Task Force left Britain. By June 14, after a number of important battles, the British had taken back Port Stanley. Thank you, Vivi, uh, for your explanation. So, moving on to my part, which is I will explain about the Argentina side. Uh, the party involved, which is the main actors and theory realism in a Falkland War uh, for the lastly and uh, the cause and aftermath of the Falkland War. So without further ado, uh, let's continue. There are three uh, main actors, which is party involved. For firstly, uh, we look at from a realist approach. One, on one side, the invading force of Argentine Junta which was under President Leopoldo Galtieri is one of the main actors. The Junta seized power in military coup d'etat in March 1976 and Galtieri rose to power in December 1981. So another main actor on the Argentina side, as you can see that uh, was Commander-in-Chief of the Argentine Navy, Admiral Jorge Anaya. The man was one of the key supporters of the claim and the masterminds behind the invasion and the operation involves. Uh, including the plan sabotage attack the HM 
Naval Base in Gibraltar, the Royal Navy's replenishment and reserve base in Mediterranean, May 2012. Uh, so the last is main actor of the ancient time was Brigadier General Mario Menendez in contempt of being usually reported as a general of the army. Uh, Menendez was a member of the military committee in Buenos Aires, uh, responsible for reporting to the president with military briefings and foreign diplomacy through law uh, and Menendez 1983. Moving on to the theory that can be related with Falkland Island War is realism theory. From what we understand, realism is the most common way to look at the Falkland War. Theories of global politics say that realism is the first theory we should look at when we try to understand what the international relations. This is because realism has been the main way that world leaders and scholars have looked at global politics in the past. Realists believe in three main ideas that states are the most important actors in the world politics, that the international system is chaotic, and the state should seek power to protect their core interests. These are the three things that we need to look at to see if an international issue is realistic or not. State is the most essential one. The government of a state has a legal control over a certain area. No one else in the international system is allowed by law to get involved in internal affairs of a state. In the Falkland conflict, the Falkland Island had been occupied, ruled, and controlled by the British since 1833. According to the Week UK, most of the island's small population, which was less than 3,000 at the 2012 census, was descended from British settlers. Some Argentine scrap metal merchants put up the Argentine flag on South Georgia Island and then invaded and took over the Falkland Island, South Georgia, and the South Sandwich Island in order to establish the sovereignty. Argentinians' action clearly hurt United Kingdom's independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. The United Kingdom and Argentina are both involved in this issue. So we already explained about the first theory, which is the states. I will explain about the natural nature of the international system. So under international environment of anarchy and unpredictable future, nations rely only on themselves. Uh, that is why the main driving force in the survived world is national interest. Back to our issue, uh, the Argentina's invasion of Falkland Island in 19. 82 was a power drive. According to a realist perspective, it had nothing to do with other elements of Argentina and it was simply a chance for Argentina to maximize its power against UK and maintain control of the military government. So according to uh, my research, the military junta of Argentina hoped to divert public attention from the country's chronic economy problems and large-scale civil unrest against the government by using Argentina's patriotic feeling towards South Atlantic Island 1982. It began with Argentinian scrap metal merchants claim some remote British island called South Georgia in name of Argentina. The revisionists reported that the Argentina government started the action of air forces, naval forces, ground forces in the war, which comprise units of the Air Force, Army, Navy, and other services. So for the last theory of the realism, uh, which is the pursuit of power to protect core interests. So the reaction of the British and the, its decision to retake Falkland Island by force was also about the interest and the maximization of power. Uh, the UK government, led by the Prime Minister, which is Margaret Thatcher, used many ways to tackle this conflict. In the early stage, UK government was surprised and intended to negotiate with uh, Argentina via other countries, but in vain. Then for the first time, many British sovereign territories have invaded by a uh, foreign part. The government has now decided the large task force to sell as soon as all preparations are complete. HMS Invincible will be in the lead and will leave postman on Monday. 
said the Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher in an emergency meeting. So finally, the country decided to strike back by force. The Evasionists reported that the task force comprised two carries, which is the HMS Hermes and the new HMS Invincible, and a multitude of the other destroyers, free jets and tankers that were called back from wherever they were worldwide and all set sail for the uh, South Atlantic. The witness reported that the Harriers, a group of jump jets protecting the, the British fleet, performed unusual in the nation's success. In return, uh, British Army started a list of air forces, naval forces and ground forces in the war. Harrier and its pilot Shah play, play a special role in air forces partly because the Shah was a truly multi-role aircraft that it could perform air-to-air -air combat and ground attack and reconnaissance and also because the Harriers could fly in a very low height as well as the very high speed uh, there are no centralized global authority that limits sovereign states and determines their action so each state must follow a self-help strategy to protect their interests Although many parts of the world intended to involve in solving this conflict, uh, the Falkland was was inevitable. Some countries like Peru and Switzerland hope uh, to help maintain peace in this conflict. But the UK received political support from United Nations, Security Council, the Commonwealth of Nations, and the European Economic Community. And finally, uh, the Falkland War broke out at that time. So the cause and the aftermath of the Falklands War, uh, the Argentines lost 649 soldiers and two civilians, which included over 300 souls, lost when the ARA General Belgrano sank. Following the Argentine defeat, the Portugal Treaty lost much support and as a result lost an election in 1993. The diplomatic results of the war were quickly rectified and the Argentina and the UK enjoy good relations today despite the fact that Argentina still remains its claim on the island. So overall, in realist perspective, uh, international issue is just like a zero-sum game rather than a win-win game, which means one part win and the other part will lose. Back to the outcome of the Falkland War, uh, the conflict lasted 74 days. In the end, Argentina uh, surrendered on 14 June 1982, while British retook their control of Falkland Islands. For British, uh, it reached their intended goals and maintained their state interests. Furthermore, the successful outcome enabled the conservative government to be re-elected in the following year. For Argentina, the outcome induced more protests against military government and accelerated the fall down of it. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Hafiq Fahmi bin Zainuddin and I will be presenting about the suggestion and recommendations for the Falklands War. So the Falklands War is a perennial red top the bright favorite uh, island. But aside from provi providing patriotic copy, it is a squabble with serious diplomatic consequences. So what to do or not to do in the case of the islands remains tricky. Is there any solution for this? Theoretically, yes, there is a solution. What they need to do is both countries could agree to a Hong Kong like lease back formula so whereby Argentina is accorded legal sovereignty of uh, the islands but the British continue to govern them in a long period of time so this was a scheme conceived by the foreign office prior to the Falkland crisis of 1982 though it had precious little political support in Britain in the wake of war but it later it became a dead letter so another possible uh, solution could be for some kind of condominium or joint sovereignty over the islands. This could afford Argentina the opportunity to claim sovereignty although it is shared but while Britain would not be compelled to renounce his own legal rights over them right? So various forms of joint sovereignty scenarios could be envisaged from one entailing essentially a symbolic Argentinian judicial presence to one involving a more active role in the running of the islands by Argentina. Next, uh, the commonly held belief that the Argentine junta invaded the Falklands to distract 
domestic attention away from declining uh, economic and social conditions it does not hold so rather the junta was responding to an international stimuli hoping that invasion would force the british to negotiate the transfer of sovereignty of the islands while the argentines held a major trump card in the position so the junta did not want to fight a war but once the british responded with force the junta found out itself locked in a situation in which it had no choice but to stay and fight less its domestic alliance with the elite oligarchy collapse forcing it to negotiate a transition to democracy on less than acceptable terms so both decisions were based on the junta's perception of gains and losses so causing them to the to respond with a risk aversion of risk seeking following the core tenets of prospect theory so in this series of events has consequences that the first world must understand in order to avoid uh, such confrontations in the future so it is important for policymakers in developed countries to understand the viewpoint of their counterparts in the third world if the british had understood the the, the Argentines uh, perceived the Falklands or Malvina Islands as a territorial position. They will not likely respond to urgent um, demands for negotiation with such nonchalant way. So they would have seen that the 150-year anniversary of British occupation of the islands would have been uh, perceived in Buenos Aires as a major territorial loss so and been more willing to seek a final acceptable outcome for both sides rather than toy with such dangerous sentiments as Argentine nationalism and the international community needs to understand how the third world views uh, gains and losses lest it again push a nation so far into the domain of losses that it has no choice but to pursue um, a more risky and a more likely aggressive action so that's all from me thank you in conclusion on the one hand the widespread condemnation of argentina invasion has been seen as an important reaffirmation of the prohibition of the use of force in the context of territorial dispute many delegation that express it themselves in the UN General Assembly debate in November 1982 in that reaffirm the fundamental importance of the principles of peaceful settlement of international dispute and of the prohibition of the use of force. 127 in this perspective it is highly significant that many of the states who expressly supported the validity of Argentina territorial claims nonetheless condemned the invasion it seems nevertheless that many states considered that this clause had not become a dead letter despite the effectiveness of UN security Argentina strengthened its attack on the British Navy with an aim to destroy as much supply and support as they could to make the lives of British troops in the Falklands as hard as possible. Britain wanted to create a so-called exclusion zone for 200 miles around the islands to prevent any Argentinian vessels operating around the Falklands.